in which to dance in flight. But certain at the rising sun, these tacit warriors seldom see. They're ever grimly ready, for someone has to be. A group of men who love their land, who serve it long and well, who stand their thankless vigil on the brink of man-made hell. On my mark, three, two, one, mark. Okay, we have missile away. René Hernandez wants to be a missileer. Over the next few weeks, he hopes to survive his training to join an elite community of men and women who are ready to do the unthinkable. If the call comes, René's job will be to launch America's intercontinental ballistic missiles. For more than 30 years, the missileers have watched and waited and 10 years after the Cold War, they're still on alert. Today, René Hernandez is seeing the real thing for the first time. I suppose it looks a little more menacing than you actually picture in your mind, finally right? looking at it. Hmm. Just knowing what it's capable of. But as far as uh, launching, yeah, it just adds a little reality to that as well. My wife, who was in the military before, uh, she said she couldn't do that. She wouldn't have accepted that assignment, and she had a little heartburn about me accepting that assignment. The first reaction is, those guys still do that? And, uh, and I'm like, well, yeah, because I'm one of them. And my, uh, my family, it's funny, they think that I, all I have down there is like me and this red button, and I get a telephone call from the president. I push it, and that's the simplicity of the way they see it. And they're like, well, you can't do that. Can you, can you do that? You're going to be able to push the red button. And, and uh, I tell them, well, you know, it's a lot different from the way you perceive it and from the movies. Rene Hernandez is part of a group of new missileers who have just arrived at the headquarters of America's nuclear missile force, F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Cheyenne, Wyoming. This film follows their lives over the course of an intense and testing year as they struggle to survive the unforgiving pressures of staying in America's nuclear front line. You know, at the end of the Cold War, there was a lot of feeling that perhaps nuclear forces were vestiges of the past. There is a, um, a renewed emphasis right now on nuclear forces. And I want to tell you who our peacetime enemy is. Our peacetime enemy is complacency. There is an exacting nature to this business because it is nuclear. So that culture that, that comes out of that is a culture that, that is indeed very, very serious about its responsibilities. Uh, it's a culture that, that is almost a, a zero defect culture, to tell you the truth. We just do not accept errors. This is not just another job that you're going to. Every single time you go out, this wing, this country, this world is depending on you to do your job perfect. Not close enough, but perfect.
the military tradition linking muskets and missiles is inescapable in Cheyenne. F.E. Warren Air Force Base is the oldest continuously occupied post in America, established in 1867 to defend the pioneers and the new railway from Indian raids on this remote western frontier. The city of Cheyenne was born on the same day as the base. In 1867, when Cheyenne was established, they also established Fort D.A. Russell, exactly three miles away. They figured if the boys had to walk in three miles to get drunk, they had a three-mile walk home in which to sober up. Maybe they'd be in better shape. Fort D.A. Russell... Rene Hernandez is 28 and very much a family man. For him and his wife, Carrie, their new life on the windswept prairies of Wyoming is a long way from home. We like the area. It's a good area to be with small children. I think it's pretty in its own way. I like the, the stars at night and the, and the rolling fields and the antelopes running around too. It's pretty cool. The history of Cheyenne has the epic sweep of the American Wild West. While Bill Hickok was married in that church, although extremely intoxicated at the time, Five weeks later, Wild Bill Hickok was shot and killed in Deadwood, South Dakota, holding the infamous Dead Man's Hand, Full House, Aces Over Aids. On their home ground at F.E. Warren Air Force Base, the tribe of high-tech missileers have pitched their camp in some of the military's most gracious historic houses. The first uh, couple days we were here, we drove by the, the mansions that they have. They're pretty huge, and it'd be fun to be able to live in one of those million dollar houses for, for a year or two years. Of course, our furniture will take up like one room or something, but, and it'll look probably pretty sad in there. Rene Hernandez and his family are on the waiting list for a house on the base but for the time being, he has found a place close to work. I'm from uh, Texas. Um, we're seventh generation Texans, so we were back there before Texas was Texas. I was about the only one in my family to leave. They're really uh, bound to Texas for some reason. After high school, I decided to join the Air Force. I did a four-year stint as a Chinese linguist. I was in uh, Hawaii, ended up meeting my wife there. <laughs> Rene became an officer and began training as a pilot. But when he realized flying would take him away from his family too often, he quit pilot training. He's hoping life as a missileer will mean more time with his wife and children. The more disturbing implications of his new job seem remote. For so many years since we've had missiles on alert, nothing's happened, so you just take that for for granted or you just actually look at it and say, well, nothing's gonna happen now because of that, so. And there's not too many people out there that could actually, that I know of that could actually launch something and land it here in the middle of Wyoming from their own country, so. That's a little reassuring also. You look across the street, you can see the, the, the missiles they have displayed, but um, I'm sure everyone thinks about it occasionally. You kinda get used to it and just, I don't know, gets to be normal. Hope nothing happens, hope he never works, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Here we have our naval panel, which is uh, kind of like cocking a pistol, and all you were doing was waiting to pull the trigger to, uh, to shoot it off. The next step is to turn the knobs on both sides. You'll have two people performing the action, and once that takes place, you release it, and you'll start to launch your sorties. All right. Russ Davis is an experienced missileer, one of 200 currently based in Cheyenne. He will also be one of the main instructors for Rene Hernandez and the other newcomers. Being in the Air Force has kind of always been my dream. Ever since I can remember, I've always had uh, aircraft posters on the wall or, or military posters of some sort. I left high school uh, in a very bad position. I, I didn't really position myself to do very much outside of high school because I didn't take it real seriously. And I wasn't very mature and responsible at that point in my life. And the Air Force, uh, kind of turned me around. 
they focused me in on what I needed to do, uh, showed me a direct path to success, and uh, I decided to take that path, and uh, everything is, has surfaced exactly how I'd, I'd hoped it would. Today we're going to be talking about the inner spiral breathing apparatus. Imagine yourself on alert. Your crew partner's Ross asleep. Davis is part of the endless process through which generations of newcomers are inculcated into the curious rites and secret rituals of going on alert. First one we're going to talk about is the WSC and uh, the MCG, CMCC. Uh, same thing with the Hicks King variable. It's a culture which has its own mysterious language and stern disciplines. And the missileers must learn to live with the customs of the tribe. The training is, is pretty much the biggest indoctrination course because it's so stringent and, and it's, it requires a great deal of, of mental capacity and, and just stamina to, to keep up with the training regime that we're required to do. Uh, I think after a period of time with our training, it becomes mechanical. You do something enough, whenever you are required to do it, you're going to do it. And that's really what the bottom line is for, for our job. You're operating the world's most uh, devastating weapon system. After eight months of basic training in California, the newcomers are now faced with the ruthless demands of the community they hope to join. This week, for instance, this class has taken four tests, and they're required to get 100% on the test in order for them to be combat-ready missileers. Once you get the mask on, you want to inhale slightly, to open the positive pressure valve. <laughs> it seems a little overwhelming, especially this first couple weeks. It seems like there's a lot of emphasis on perfection. And you think, gosh, am I ever going to get all of this? There's so much information. And, and I take it very seriously. And I know that when you're dealing with nuclear weapons, you must be perfect. And there's no room for mistakes. So that's a lot of pressure. Good job. 100%. Cool. Terrific. Thank okay. you very much, sir. Good job. Right. 100%. Oh, Jesus. Outstanding. <laughs> you're, you're hired. In this field, they want you to be perfect, and you have to really know wrong decision from a right decision. So uh, that's the way the tests are. Well, you missed one because you didn't answer one. Oh, golly. That's a hard way to go. That is a hard way to go. I'll let you go back and answer it. Just don't look at the answer. I missed one question in my first uh, test here. I double checked it, but I didn't triple check something. Okay, go back and answer this question and come back. This is our mascot. This is Spot Check. And uh, he's just one more reminder every time we come in here that we need to check everything that we do and then check it again. For Rene Hernandez, as for every missileer, his fitness to stay within the community will be constantly tested in the crucial ordeal of evaluation. Rene's ability to stand up to evaluation over the coming months will determine whether he will survive as a missileer. It's very difficult to perform at that level, obviously, and, and people really can't. And uh, that's where the conflict comes in, because people are, are people, they make mistakes. But the missile business doesn't always allow for those mistakes. Uh, and, uh, and that's something we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, trying to do your best, sometimes not measuring up to it, and realizing that you can't judge your self-worth by your performance in, in this job because it's, it's a, a, almost an unsurmountable obstacle to reach 100 percent, 100 percent of the time. Room 10 check. For the newcomers, there are real bonuses to be earned if they survive the grueling demands of missile training. Experience as a missileer is an important passport to speedy military promotion and missileers can command big salaries in high-tech industries when their service days are over. My boss uh, did some checking around and said, what does Bill need to do to progress on in his career? And they said, well, he's never worked in the missile field. So they, he said, OK, he's going to go work in the missile field. So it was a decision that, uh, that my boss, looking out for my prog progression, said, Bill, you need to go work in missiles. And I said, yes, sir, and saluted and went to missile training. In a few days now, Rene Hernandez and the other newcomers will be going out on their first alerts. 
after all the training and the simulations, they will come face to face with their daunting responsibilities. For the moment, though, the base is in holiday mood. Trigger Hello. How are you doing? At his house, Rene Hernandez is throwing a Halloween party for the new missileers who are still getting to know Cheyenne. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot to do, but there are a lot there's of places a lot to where do. There's, there's a lot of bars around here. That's a fact. Oh, we like it. We heard uh, from people that it was really family oriented, a good place to raise kids, and uh, so far from the looks of it, it really it appears that way. Uh, it's real laid back, and it's got everything that that we could want. You know, maybe except for Toys R Us, but it's still a really nice town. It's big enough for us. Woo! Pretty scary there. What's going on? Happy Halloween. We haven't been through a hard winter yet, so we could change our mind, you know, seven months from now. It could be a different story. You're welcome. Happy Halloween. With his first alert only days away now, Rene must complete a trainer ride. In a simulator on the base, he's tested on the routines and problems he will soon be expected to deal with in a remote launch capsule deep under the prairie. This is your first initial trainer ride. You're going to be learning uh, some various base level uh, training procedures. For every missileer, however experienced, life is governed by the book, a series of highly detailed checklists which control and direct every action from dealing with a power cut to repelling a terrorist attack on the silo. Sir, the PAS alarm is sounding. We are breaking out the shotguns and donning our gas masks. We are raising the B-plug and remove power from it. Standing by. It's not done everything to Cat 1 here. I agree, you're going to penetrate LFs, OK? Contact cannot be established. Let me ask if they've heard any gunshots. If you heard any gunfire out there, is, are you being attacked? OK, that's lost contact now. So. That's it. Something they always tell you: make sure you're, you're doing the checklist. You're reading the checklist. Okay. Step uh, one: 14, 16, 18, NA. If forgetting to do that, you could uh, you could skip over a, like item 11 or something, item 10. And it happens to be the item that uh, is the most crucial in the checklist. Launch all intercontinental ballistic missiles ASAP. Unlock codes are A, B, C, D, E, F. OK. Agree? I agree. OK, I'm on checklist 3-69. OK, I'm there with you. Got the key. Okay. Launch key inserted. Unlock code enter A, B, C, D, E, F. And they test you on this stuff, and they run you through hey, trial runs and our trainers. And, uh, and you sort of, it's sort of sad, but you, you don't really joke about it, but you just will mention, well, geez, if I'm doing if we're at this point in the war, I guess my family is gone already, or something. You know, it, it, it's just things that you you realize that if you're doing them, that that, that things aren't doing too well up topside. And uh, yeah, you tell yourself that well, I'm going to do exactly what I'm doing in training. Enable switch to enable. Okay, we're good to go. Hands on keys. Okay, on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Looking for ELC message transmit. Got it. Release. Okay, there it is. Adding to all the other pressures on the missileers, they're also required to be fit, trim, and free of problems. It's all spelled out in the ultimate checklist, the PRP, or Personnel Reliability Program. You are hereby ordered that upon entry into the uh, missile field, you must abide by the PRP program. And anything that you do that is contrary to the PRP program is subject to, to uh, 
uh, punitive measures, so be very cautious. I'm going to start off talking to you about what... Getting certified under the program is the final rite of passage in becoming a missileer. For every missileer, the tough requirements of the program rule the details of their daily lives, whether they're on duty or at home with their families. If you're distracted for some reason by some personal event in your life or your financial situation or some other uh, event that, that, uh, that dominates your consciousness while you're on alert, you are probably not going to be able to focus on your duties. Most of the issues that come up with PRP are very personal. So as a result, I rely on you to monitor your own reliability and to monitor others. Days of playground loyalty are out the window. These are nuclear weapons we're talking about, so don't feel like you're ratting out your friends. Lieutenant Hernandez, you're married. Your family is probably going to experience medical problems, so don't be surprised if your wife needs to see the doctor for some personal issue that, that I'll find out about it, and you'll be suspended from PRP until you know, she has an opportunity to work through that problem and you're there to support her. You also have to have a positive attitude towards nuclear weapons. Positive attitude to towards nuclear weapons doesn't mean that, that you are glad to have your finger on the button and you want to nuke our enemies. That's not what that's about. The positive attitude towards nuclear weapons is that you are comfortable with the fact that the United States uses nuclear weapons as a deterrent force and that you are willing to uh, follow the lawful orders of the president in execution of the nuclear weapons. I reviewed your records and what I'm going to do now is certify you both to perform PRP duties in the 320th. And Lieutenant Hernandez, this one's for you. Okay, congratulations. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye, go to work. Yeah, I'm going to work. Bye, go to work. Bye. 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 You call me? Yeah, I'll call you. Bye-bye. <laughs> After the months of training and preparation, Rene Hernandez is leaving for his first alert. finished your training and this is one last time to make sure that you understand the importance of the job that you're about to undertake. This duty should be enough to wake you up in the middle of the night. Never underestimate how much we are counting on you to do it right. Uh, yeah, I guess I am a little nervous. I think I'm more nervous actually just leaving my family alone with the way the weather is around here. Renee's first alert begins like every alert, with careful preparations for the hazardous 100-mile drive into the empty prairie. Survival kit, shovel. It's a routine which every missileer comes to accept as part of the job, as they set out eight times each month to reach the remote launch control center. Perfection. That's all I'm asking of you, is that you do your job perfectly, each and every time, without a single mistake, for the next four years. You're trained, you're ready. Time to go pull alert. Good on this side. The facility where Rene Hernandez is going to pull his first alert is one of 20 identical launch control centers spread over 12 and a half thousand square miles in Wyoming, Nebraska, and Colorado. All right, sir, uh, they're ready to come down. For the next 24 hours, Rene and his crew commander, John Teakin, will be responsible for 10 remote missile silos scattered miles away under the prairie. They will control more than a hundred times the destructive power of the Hiroshima bomb.
St. Clair. Seventy feet below ground, in a complex built to withstand a direct nuclear strike, the first task is to check out the life support systems which would allow the missileers to survive for 30 days following a nuclear war. As they take over from the outgoing crew, neither René or his commander know where their missiles are targeted. Missiles can be quickly redirected, but the targeting is beyond the control of the missileers on alert. Step one, missile wave circuits tested. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, I got them all. You can reset them. The console, video power switches on. Okay, they're on. As Rene gets to know the capsule, which will be his workplace and second home over the next four years, the routines endlessly rehearsed in training become real. Okay, auxiliary alarm panel, 12 through 24. He says failure, off. In the back of your mind, you always have, well, hopefully, you know, we never would ever use them, but uh, it's not too far beyond, you know, the possibility that it could happen. Okay, sir. All right, we should check in. Okay, That's pretty scary. Uh, you, you've been in training for approximately nine months, and you hear the horror stories from people that have done it and people that haven't done it. And you get down in the capsule, and, and we split it up. The commander will go to sleep for about half the time we're down in the, in the capsule. And uh, you're in there all by yourself with this nuclear weapon. The responsibility of it is uh, pretty heavy, and that's what you worry about. You hear about people getting in trouble for doing the wrong thing. Uh, hope I don't do something that's wrong. René is now face to face with the issue which ultimately confronts every missileer. Could he really turn the key and launch the nuclear devastation he controls? They make you think about it so much before you actually get into the career field. Um, they ask you questions about, uh, would you be willing to do this? And uh, uh, So they prepare you, and then they have a really open, frank uh, discussions that, uh, about uh, a person's ability to do something like this. You do your job. Number one, okay, is there some anxiety? I would guess so. I mean, if you're asking me uh, if it was actually time to turn the key, would I turn it? Yes. Would I have some anxiety? Yeah, I sure would. It doesn't bother me. I don't have to think about every day, is this the right thing? I know I'm doing the right thing. And if it ever would get to that point, I would have no problem doing that because if it does get to that point, I'm confident that we are um, following the orders of, we're following the rightful orders of the president. At that point, there would probably not be another option. You have to believe you can do it in order to be in this career field. Uh, they train you so much that uh, when stuff comes in and you, you get your orders, you do it. So I have no, uh, I believe I would not hesitate to do it. René Hernandez's first alert passes without a hint of Armageddon. His 24 hours in the capsule go by in a routine of status checks, reading, TV watching, studying, and sleeping. It's a pattern which is replayed like a stuck record for generations of missileers over the past 30 years. Rene has been initiated 
into the unchanging rituals of a job which is about never having to do the job. That's exactly what we hope. Uh, we provide this deterrent force here, and by its nature, it is supposed to deter actions by other people. So inaction in our, on our part hopefully produces inaction on their part. So that's, that's just the nature of deterrence, and, and we're very proud of the fact that we are ready to go at a moment's notice, but we hope to never have to go. I miss my family uh, when they're gone, even for 24 hours since I've been gone, so I'm looking forward to seeing them. Overall, I got about eight hours sleep, so not too shabby. I'll tell my wife I slept about two hours, and uh, <laughs> feeling really tired. But uh, not so she doesn't get jealous, but uh, that it's not too bad. It's, it's uh, something I think I can do for for several years. And of course, ask me ten alerts from now, and uh, I'm sure it'll be different. <laughs> are gathered for an important annual bonding ceremony. The Guardian Challenge is a top gun competition between America's three missile bases for the Blanchard Trophy. The Western style spectacular send off leaves no one in any doubt about the requirement to deliver the right stuff. Blanchard is ours this year. It's the explicit goal of this wing to bring that Blanchard trophy home, and we're going to do it. I still like it, and they're not too bad, the alerts. Uh, people told me, like, after 10 alerts that it would uh, get old, but, I mean, it, was, it felt pretty much the same as it, in my last alert at pulled feels about the same as my uh, first alert. It would uh, get really, really bad. So we have to actually do our job, which is to launch, but you know, of course we haven't done that in the last six months. My three-year-old, he, uh, for a while he thought I'd gotten those missiles that are out in the front gate and like blasted off. I think now, I think he's just getting the concept that I'm a soldier and, uh, and his mama told him I protect people, which is sort of ironic in the job I do, but he thought soldiers were bad because they hurt people. And his mama told him, well, he's a soldier and he's supposed to, he's, he's a good guy, you know, he protects you, so he was trying to figure out what dad's role was a little more. I guess he figured I'm not a spaceman anymore, so. <laughs> I hear a train coming. The Hernandez family are moving up the list now for a house on base. I hear a train coming. But for Renee's wife, Carrie, who's doing a university degree in computer science, the alerts are becoming something of a strain. She doesn't like it too much. Sometimes she says it gives her almost a feeling of being a single mother because uh, she has to take care of the kids and uh, uh, by herself without any help from me. Even though I only go on alert one night, but you know, put, you know, put uh, stuff around that, events around that on uh, either side of that alert, and it's like I'm gone for three days. So it's challenging. She doesn't like it. Uh, A hundred miles from home, the domestic details of the above-ground missile alert facility mimic the comforts of an American suburbia. For René, pulling his alerts in the underground capsule, the routines of life as a missileer are familiar now. Now I feel comfortable on alert, like when the commander's asleep, because I've seen pretty much most of uh, what normally happens. I try not to watch too much TV. I don't want to spend 10 hours, because I could, on alert, watching television. I know the commanders want to hear me say, like, studying, like, eight, out, eight hours out of the time I'm there, but the leisure time, you have to spend it uh, doing something that's not boring you to death. So watching TV, reading books, 
and then uh, I usually throw in you know at least an hour on most alerts of, of uh, study time, sometimes two when you have evaluations coming up. Renee's evaluation, the crucial test of his fitness to stay within the tribe of the missileers, can never be far from his thoughts in the long hours on alert. In the empty spaces of western Nebraska, a maintenance team is working in a missile silo. The silos are unmanned, but a dedicated band of followers ceaselessly check the sites to tend and nurture the waiting missiles. It's never just a job. Um, working at Burger King is a job. This isn't a job. This is, this is what we do. Um, you have to have a tremendous amount of respect for it. We get the mindset that, that, that we were put here to do this. This is why we're here. And uh, take a lot of pride in doing this. You need to be, have an extremely strong work, work ethic. Um, we don't call in sick. We don't, uh, we don't ask anybody for help. We, uh, we come out here and do what we have to do. It just takes a big heart, basically. Maintenance teams like this are controlled by the missileers miles away in their capsules. And the detailed communications required take up much of the missileers' time on alert. I've been on over 100 alerts and I've never seen a missile. It's kind of nice to come out here and see uh, the impact portion of the mission. And that's, that's the reason we go out on alerts and it's the, uh, the pointy end of the sphere. A few days each year, the city and the base share a very special party. Every year since 1896, Cheyenne has staged a spectacular celebration of the Old West, known as Frontier Days. For the Missileers, Frontier Days is also an occasion to celebrate the relationship with the city. The town and the base are, they're kind of two peas in a pod, really, because they're so reliant upon each other. But I think for Frontier Days, we, uh, we support them a great deal. And it's, it's kind of nice because it gets us off base and gets us in the community a lot. And uh, it's kind of chaotic just because the town grows to two or three times its actual size. So we actually have people forgetting how to drive and all kinds of good stuff. Since the beginning, the base has played a vital part in Frontier Days. The planning and preparation draws volunteers from both communities over the entire year. Military men and women help to organize elaborate Western balls and to choose Miss Frontier. Missileers serve beer and help to clear up after the horses. It's the moment when the two tribes and the two cultures meet and mingle. Happy Frontier Days! But it's the rodeo which is the heart of Frontier Days. It's known as the daddy of them all, the biggest outdoor rodeo on earth. the ultimate expression of the pioneer culture which created some of America's defining myths on the prairies of the Wild West, the epic territory which is now home to the missiles which still watch over America's high frontier.
what we do gives the general populace the peace of mind to go on with their their day-to-day -day business. To always have that nuclear threat hanging over your head would be a very disconcerting way to, li to live. And I think by performing the function that we perform as, as missile operators, we've been able to lift that, uh, that, that looming shadow over people's heads and they've been able to go on with their lives. You always have in the back of your mind that you're doing something that's maintaining the American way of life. Rene Hernandez faces the ultimate test of his fitness to do his job on America's nuclear front line. With Ross Davis as his commander, he's about to undergo his first evaluation, an intensive review of his skills as a missileer. Good afternoon. I am Captain Gross, your operator for this evaluation. What happens to Rene in the trainer now could have a devastating impact on his career. They demand that, uh, that you just perform flawlessly. And when I say flawlessly, it could mean the difference between a half a second or one second uh, flipping a circuit breaker just because you're stressed out about the uh, evaluation environment. They're very challenging. If you do well on them, uh, your life is very simple. If you don't, uh, your life becomes much more complex, just dependent upon uh, how you did that day in the evaluation. FSC. Yes, yeah, Lieutenant Hernandez, we had a change uh, at Echo 7, the IZ reset. Understand. All right, thank you. You're about as good as your last evaluation, and uh, it really hangs on you. People know there's people that will memorize like their entire squadron's evaluations for the last uh, you know, six or seven events, so it'll affect you. There's a little bit of a stigma with it. What page are you on? 4-44. Okay, here. You agree? Uh, I agree. Okay, I need you to isolate circuit breaker six on the LCDS distribution panel. I guess being uptight is part of the job, and it really stretches out to the people that actually do the job. They're really uptight, and you find yourself being like that. Uh, the evaluations, uh, not being able to, to even have a, an error out in the field, and it does become part of the culture. Hello? Okay, we lost contact. Do you agree? Let's go to yeah, security. And Echo 4 is a penetrated site. Do you agree? Okay. Operator up. I agree. I have a 3 Charlie. I agree. 3 Charlie. Dress indications from the CAT 2 to 7 team on site. For, loss of For people who really have their, their eyes set on, on advancement, uh, you can have an honest to goodness mistake in these evaluations, and uh, it'll stick with you for the entire time you're here. And that, and that eventually affects your career. For alert force, for alert force. Claxton, Claxton, Claxton. Launch all intercontinental ballistic missiles ASAP. Let's go. Okay, 369. Okay, let's go ahead and get our look. The uh, launch key down. Watch your head. Is inserted. Do you agree? I agree. Select launch from the main menu. Selected. I agree. It looks good. Lock the enable. Hands on keys. On my mark. Three, two, one, mark. The ELC okay. message transmit. 13 now. Okay. okay. Release. 13 is in. Okay, we have missile away for echo two, three, five, six, seven. 8, 10, and 11. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Satisfied? I am. I have to terminate. All right. Hopefully in 30 minutes we find out how it went. I think the longer you wait, generally it's not, not good news. Final results for the evaluation are highly qualified for the crew. The crew committed zero major errors and one minor error. Overall for the commander, I thought uh, you were a little bit nervous at first, but once you relax and calm down, I thought everything went real smooth. Felt looked like you were real comfortable in there, like it was nothing new to you. And then I thought you did a really good job leading the crew. It was a real strong performance for the crew overall. 
So overall, good job. Great. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, Audrey. Good job. All right. Thank you. They feel the living throb of the mindless tools they run. They hear the constant whir of a world that knows no sun. Beneath it all, they're common men who eat and sleep and dream. But between them is a common bond of knowledge they're a team. And on boredom flux with stress, encapsulated, they reside. They do their job without complaint of pleasure oft denied. For duty, honor, country, and a matter of self-pride. During a vital annual evaluation of the whole base, Ross Davis was judged to have made a critical error. He's now leaving missiles to retrain as a navigator. Lynn McDonald was promoted to be an evaluator, but then made an error herself during an evaluation. She's now back pulling eight alerts a month. Rene Hernandez has become a scheduler, required to pull only half his alerts. He and his family now have a house on the base. And the top gun team from F.E. Warren did not bring home the Blanchard trophy. They're determined to get it back next year. <laughs>